So now I'm going to go to um, some of the synth elements still before going to percussion. So oh, mute them all, unmute my aux. We'll just start with, um, start with the first thing here. actually a stereo print of their demo, the intro of the original demo um, that we built everything on. Control. So let's <laughs> let's see what's going on. Um, hey Joel, did you take the phone away or something? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So you can see I ducked 80, 80 hertz quite considerably. What I'm looking for with this is less to hear it, more to feel it, as is the case usually with any sort of sub-bass stuff I do. Um, that's one of those few exceptions where I, I don't care if I hear it as perfectly as feel it. Um, turn it up for a minute to get some joy and really feel that low end. That's close. It'll turn down just a little half dB more just to be safe. Looks like the same kind of sound, so I'm just gonna copy this down. Um, I have a little I have a distortion plug in here, Manny M distortion that I was adding to this section. Um, can't remember the method from from madness, so let's just, let's just listen here. A totally different sound that with that, and, and this is a distortion I do use a lot um, on sounds like this, it's, and a lot of synth sounds, um, even some guitar stuff. It adds a lot of good overdrive and distortion, well, without uh, without cutting your low end, um, so you can still kind of feel the full range of a sound while while getting just kind of crunchy, nice, cool distortion. Distortion knob a lot, and the direct knob a lot, and the drive knob a lot. Very often don't have to touch these as much, but I will tinker a little bit, usually. Yeah, I mean, I just like, I like this one brutal, kind of almost, almost like it sounds a little overblown on its own, but the feeling that it will achieve in the mix will, uh, will be cool. Leave it about this, about there, about the same as the other one for now. Okay, Let's take off some low end, which I probably already did. Mm -hmm. Less than I did, but I might go back and re repeat the move that I originally <laughs> originally did because I probably did it for a reason by the time I got to the end. But hey, we're gonna take some chances. We're gonna see if we can make this even better, right? Add my delay in there. Gives it a little more of a feeling. hard to perceive with the sound, but it's it's adding something. Let me see if I if the quarter note does anything. I like that one a lot. 
it kind of makes it a little almost musical. It gives it a subtle rhythm without having it because you hear that quarter note kind of in those in-between in beats, and it gives it a little bit of a, a sway, even though it shouldn't have one, so that's kind of cool. It's subtle, it's hard to perceive, but it's, a bit, it's there. Gently tuck it in there. It doesn't need to be loud. This is an active rock song. You don't want to dominate it with the synths. There's a lot of electronic stuff in, in, this, in this mix, and you got to make sure you can add it all in there without freaking the rock fan out. <laughs> I'm sure, when a rock fan thinks about listening to an awesome rock song, they don't think about this part <laughs> or this sound. Or wanted wanted to hear hear this in particular. This, this these are the things that I think make rock music appealable to everyone else who doesn't already like it. That's um, like a cool synth song, my opinion. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's almost what makes the whole thing seem even more electronic than it is. A lot of people will, will reference this song like, "Can you make it like super electronic, like this, like the face everything and rise?" And and even my in my head, knowing what's under the hood, it's not that electronic. <laughs> comparatively to like other more way more electronic things that I do, but the th elements that stand out, how it starts, sounds electronic. Those pre-courses sound very electronic, um, and that sound in particular, you give it that immediate feeling that if you're a rock fan, you, you, you're gonna pour, you're gonna recognize that it has some EDM elements and, and some kind of pop music elements straight out the gate. If you if you're a pop fan, you might. Those elements might make you feel comfortable enough to listen to the song, even if you're not a rock fan, or even discern it as a rock song. Um, it's a fine line. That's a really tough game to play, and, and it's a game you play all the time as a, as a, as a professional writer, producer, mixer. Um, but it's, you know, you're always trying to find that balance of kind of how do I reach everyone that doesn't already like this? Because that's way more people than the people that like it. <laughs> you know, what, especially when it comes to rock music. I mean, this is something good to talk about because rock music is a smaller genre. It's a smaller rate. It's a smaller format. Um, it's still very successful. I don't want to discourage anyone and say it's you know <laughs> not awesome. But you know, if you look at like the radio charts and and see like fmqb.com and see the actual spins that a song gets on radio. You can go through each format and see, and see the formats and compare it to urban, compare it to pop, compare it to, to AC or country and stuff. And, and rock's a small format. The number one rock song will get about 2,000 spins a week. The number one pop song will get 20 to 40,000 spins a week, depending on the song. So there's a lot of music fans out there that aren't being reached as rock fans. You know, I would say most people are people that don't listen to rock music. Most, I would say most people are people that don't listen to rock radio. If we're talking about most people and playing, you know, playing the masses, most people nowadays are not active rock fans. And now, I'm an active rock producer saying that, you know, and, 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 I, and I'm an active rock fan as well, but I do, you know, I appreciate all music, and I listen to music first and foremost as a fan of music and not a fan of a particular genre. Um, I'm a fan of songs more than I am a fan of bands. I'm a fan of sounds more than I am a fan of um, instruments. You know, it doesn't, I don't care if you're using a guitar or you're using a keyboard. If I, want to just, if I want the feeling to feel heavy, you can use one or the other as long as the feeling feels heavy. Um, I think when it comes to mixing rock music and incorporating pop elements and dance elements and whatever hip-hop elements, I think it's trying to find that trying to do that in a way that gives you that same feeling that you'd get from adding a guitar. Because I think nowadays, the way kids think, the way you know, teens think, is, is heavy is a feeling more than it is a, a guitar tone or, or a, a particular tuning. And I think dubstep and stuff like that's a perfect example of things that to, to kids these days feel rebellious and heavy and more punk rock than any fucking dude with a Les Paul and a Marshall stack would to a 14-year-old, to a 15-year-old kid. And 
you know, I'm, I'm considerate of those people because that's who I was. That's the, you know, the most critical fan is the 14-year-old inside of me. And that guy's an asshole. <laughs> that, that guy, you know, that guy is, 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 cares, cares more than, than anybody else does about every single, <laughs> single thing. By the way, just so you know, that intro is, uh, when I first heard it, um, was the thing that made me think, well, this is going to be a cool song. So as a rock fan... Like that intro was like, wow, this is going to be different. I mean, it's under you know my my you know I'm like like I said before I'm a, I'm a anti purist so it's my personal opinion that the only way to move uh, rock music forward, especially, is to s stop using the same four things to to make it and and using the same four things to do it and stop trying to make the black album over and over and stop trying to you know redo all the things less good you know even as good isn't good enough you know you you know. You can make a record that's equally as good sonically and creatively as the Black Album t today, to where it would have sounded like it followed the Black Album, but that's not good enough. You got to make, you know, my my challenge to everybody out there is is make, you know, make rock music that can feel as competitive with anything that's in the top ten of the pop charts. That's my goal, and and I haven't done it yet. I haven't done it, done it yet, but I think. Moving the genre forward, if we can think like that, if we, if we can realize it is one big video game and we're all warriors, let's say, you, you know, for, for our team, for a rock, for, for a rock team. Team rock. Well we, well, we can't just compete against each other and play football with each other. We got to play with the big kids, which are the top 40 people. And we got to make music that's competitive, in my opinion, with Lady Gaga, with Bruno Mars, with... with uh, who, 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 any of any of the Kanye West, we gotta make, we gotta we gotta do that. We gotta really, you know, not be afraid to to change and evolve and add new things and try new sounds. And some of the coolest stuff I've done, even writing wise, is ref is starting from references of songs that are other genres. Blood, I started from listening to Kanye West beats and then fucking with the drum pattern and then writing writing riff on top of that became a whole new kind of thing and a new feeling that I wouldn't have got trying to emulate any, any classic metal record, as much as I love classic metal stuff. That's my rant for the day. <laughs> I like your rant. <laughs>
thing that all of a sudden makes it just something else. Um, do you think uh, when you get a chance, uh, you could call out some of the frequency numbers when you're uh, the frequencies when you're adjusting them? Because some people are they're having a hard time reading what Seen. it says on yeah. the DSP. That's kind of actually, truthfully, um, one of, one of the things even for me with this EQ. Yeah, that's what I told them actually because I own it too, and it's always been hard to read. Yeah, that that and I mean I get it from a branding perspective in terms of green everything but it makes it kind of a little you know it, it, to me if there was different color colors differentiating each thing it'd be so much easier to identify the bands and identify um what i'm doing just from far away um so so i, I agree it's hard to read i'll try to mention those nothing nothing crazy on these last two honestly i'm just rolling low end off 38 on on this guy i, I boost the top end at about Nine, nine, 9300 um, just a little bit that's I do that a lot I like the, I like the high end boost that happens you know just in that 9 10k mark um, makes sense like that kind of sound a little sandy or something that kind of it's almost a, adds a little bit of saturation or something that just I like it makes my ears kind of sizzle in a sweet way Pro -pro probably not good to listen to all day but it feels really good. <laughs> really good when you listen to it for a few minutes. <laughs> okay, uh, that's the rough of my synths for now. <laughs> 